Hey everybody. You are looking at my Tanapoma Acuterostra. And he is in my 125. And he is perfectly healthy and normal. He is sleeping. He does that all the time. So I wanted to get a little bit of a look at that before I start walking back and forth in front of the tank and disturbing him. I want to shoot another video tonight about the nitrogen cycle and in this video I want to talk about some of the things that we can do to disrupt the nitrogen cycle just in the course of our you know regular maintenance uh, of running a tank and um, I want to discuss what can happen and I want to discuss ways to avoid catastrophe uh, it's it's very easy you just have to think about your nitrogen cycle properly and once again I'm gonna hope at the end of this video we come out the other side of it uh, with you thinking about the bacteria that lives in your tank a little differently uh, the first thing I want to stress as I always do is you need to look at the bacteria that live in your tank as part of the community of the tank now I watched a video recently uh, somebody had overstocked a tank, or well, they didn't overstock it, they just too, they stocked it too rapidly, and they wound up getting an ammonia spike, and they lost some of their more sensitive fish that were in the tank. Um, I wish I could say I've never done anything like that, but I certainly have. I've done things even worse than that, that I should have just known better. I've left dirty filter material in tanks and, you know, just intended to get back to it, and I never did, and, you know started having issues with my nitrogen cycle because I changed the parameters uh, in the tank. I changed the ecosystem. And that's just what I want to get driven home is whenever we change something in the tank, we need to start thinking about how that's going to affect the overall ecosystem. You're not looking at a big cube full of water. You are looking at an entire self-contained world. And the bacteria that lives on all the surface area and chiefly lives in your filter on all of the biomedia that's why you have that biomedia in there to give that bacteria a place to live so you're already whether you realize it or not you're already setting up a system that provides uh, a home for your bacteria you provide it a way to bring fresh food sources to it uh, continually that's the water flow that goes through your filter so you're already doing things to create a suitable habitat for this bacteria. Um, most people just don't really think about it though. And the odd thing about the bacteria is what its food source is. Its food source is the waste product of other things. So there's a symbiosis between your bacteria and your macrofauna, you know, your your larger animals that live in the tank, whether that's snails or shrimp or it's fish or whatever, uh, these animals produce ammonia as a waste and it's toxic to them, but it's food for your bacterial cultures. So in the instance where we overload a tank too rapidly or a tank's not fully cycled in, that's why we're looking at this tank, I'm coming down the last literally few hours before it's finished cycling in and I'll get into why I can tell you we're down to the last few hours uh, as the video progresses. So we all know, you know, it's, whether you even understand the nitrogen cycle or not, if you're completely new to the hobby, uh, there's just this sort of innate understanding that putting too many fish in the tank at once, there's just too much waste being produced, and you just kind of understand that in some magical sort of way the tank deals with that waste, but you've got to give it time to adjust for the new amount of waste that's being produced. That's pretty cut and dry. Most people seem to understand that, um, you know, whether they realize they understand that or not. That's just one of those sort of innate um, understandings we have about how a tank works. One thing that I want to point out, a scenario that could likely happen and would not necessarily at first thought be a scenario where you would think you're risking any kind of real uh, damage to your tank and that would be greatly reducing the bio load in your tank very suddenly 
Um, you know, like I say, we all think about greatly increasing the bio load, putting too much ammonia in the tank that, you know, more the ammonia than your tank is capable of dealing with. But let's consider for a moment what happens when you say have the bio load, you take half the amount of fish out of the tank suddenly. Well, once again, the waste products from those fish is the food source for your bacteria. So if you think about your bacteria like they're little small animals, what happens if you suddenly have the amount of food that's getting to your herd, I'll say? You start having a lot of animals die. And in the case with your aquarium, remember, your bacterial colonies live on surface area so the ones that suddenly start starving to death and dying because you've suddenly reduced their food source by half are all the bacteria that are on the surface uh, of your bacterial cultures you know you got that thick gunky stuff that grows on your sponge or your you know ceramic rings or whatever it's the ones on the surface that are the ones that are exposed to the food and they're ones that are doing the most work so when your food source gets cut uh, in this case, your ammonia being reduced by having your bioload, having the amount of fish you have in your tank, um, you're, you're now starting a sort of runaway feedback loop in your tank. All, all those bacteria that are dying are organic life. It's stuff that's dying in your tank. And what happens to organics that die and break down and deteriorate in your tank? They produce ammonia. So suddenly you've got this huge spike in ammonia being produced in your tank and your tank has just recently been crippled with the amount of die-off it's had in your bioculture. Furthermore, as I said, it's the very surface material that has the most die-off and this dead bacteria is now preventing fresh water that is now ammonia rich from coming in contact with the lower strata of living cultures that are on your biomedia. So even though the ammonia is increasing in your tank, your bacterial cultures have a limited ability to deal with it and you wind up getting this runaway feedback loop where stuff starts dying and things start going south really, really quickly. So how can we avoid all of this? Well, the first way to do it is the old ounce of prevention uh, beats a pound of cure proverb and that is simply don't do anything drastic or radical to your tank and when I say that I mean in any regard don't go in there and do a major rescape don't go in there and do a huge uh, gravel vac and clean and scrub all the rocks off uh, if you don't want to take the chance on disrupting your um, nitrogen cycle because all of these things can have a big impact on your nitrogen cycle. It's even recommended that you only clean the viewing pane of the glass because that material lives on the surface of the glass. So you go in there and you scrub all the glass down, you're removing a lot of your tank's biofiltration capacity. So anytime, and this is what I want to stress the most because this is where it's really easy. You can do whatever you want with your tank because they make and sell test equipment. Test, test, test your tanks. Anytime you've done anything to your tank that is going to change your conditions within the tank, you need to start checking to see if you've made any kind of changes within your tank um, on an unseen microscopic level. Now, there's two different ways we can find out that we've done something to our nitrogen cycle. There's the way that we unfortunately all too often experience. I myself have experienced it and I call it the canary in the coal mine method. The first thing you will notice is some of your more sensitive fish either swimming around in circles, banging into walls, or just plain old dying off. And of course at that point the red flag goes up, the test kit comes out, and you go, hey look at that, I got extra ammonia in my tank, or look at all the nitrites that are in there and you've lost animals and now you're in panic emergency response mode with doing massive water changes and etc cetera, etc cetera. and we never have to get to that point because anytime you do anything to your tank all you got to do is start testing your water it's when you ignore your water especially after you've done something that you know could change what's going on in your tank. If you do a big cleaning, start checking your water. If you do a huge, you know, you, you, every now and again, we all got to tear our filter apart and really get in there and give it a what for and, and clean it out. Um, man, when I do that, 
I'm checking my tank every four or five hours for the first day after I've done that because I want to know what's going on in my tank. If after four or five hours I'm not seeing any change, I might start doing a, you know, checking, I'll check later that evening. And if I'm still not seeing any change, I'll go to bed without worrying about it. If the next morning I'm still not seeing any ammonia starting to spike, I'm still not seeing any nitrites starting to spike. I feel comfortable that I didn't do enough that I've impacted my tank's ability to handle the bioload. So, let's look at a different tank for a few minutes here. This is going to be the next tank I actually get to working on. Uh, it needs a good scrubbing down in there. Got a lot of green stuff growing everywhere. Uh, a lot of this plant material is going to come out of here. Look, they think they're getting fed. <laughs> um, so just the surface area on this plant material that I pull out of here. When I pull the plant material out of here, you know, that, that plant material is pulling stuff out of the tank. It's adding carbon dioxide. It's using up oxygen. Or I'm sorry, the other way around. It's using up carbon dioxide. It's adding oxygen. Um, you know, that plant is doing things. That, that, so I, I removed three great big leaves off of it. Now I've just changed what's going on in this tank. This is a very, very small, self-contained world. Uh, you don't have to make major changes to it to have a major impact on the ecosystem that's in there. It's a closed system. Um, anytime you do anything that you've altered what's going on in that tank or may have altered what's going on in that tank, just start checking your parameters. If nothing starts changing and you notice everything's fine, then don't sweat it. Um, if you notice, like, okay, I'm starting to get a little bit of ammonia creeping up. Well, then you go into hyper... Um, you know, alert, and you start checking the tank every couple of hours to find out how quickly is the ammonia building up. Um, if it's building up extremely slowly, you know, if you're getting a quarter part per million over a full day, well, you know, do a 25% water change and then watch it again and keep your eye on it and keep checking your nitrites. And eventually, you will see that your tank will recover, it will self-adjust, all of your bacterial cultures will grow back into their proper numbers and places, and your tank will sort itself out. And all you've got to do is watch it. You know, you bought the test equipment, use it. You've got it sitting right in the other room. It's, you know, it's pennies per test, it takes a few minutes to do, and... I will say on a final note about doing the test and testing your water, um, the idea that people look at that sort of as it's a chore or something to that effect has always kind of baffled me, sort of puzzled me actually. Um, I look at keeping fish as a hobby. And when I think about hobbies, just to rattle a few off, making models, collecting stamps, um, you know, fishing, putting puzzles together, almost any kind of hobby you want to think about. Is it the sitting there looking at the finished model on the shelf, or is it the act of putting the model together? Is it, you know, looking at the um, completed puzzle? Is it looking at the full stamp book? Or is it the collecting the stamps and buying them and all the fiddly bits of putting them in the book and stacking them up in the right places? It's the activity that goes into the hobby that makes it a hobby. If it were sitting here staring at fish tanks, I mean, that's tantamount to watching television. It's doing stuff with my fish tanks that makes it a hobby for me, and it's learning about what's going on in my tanks. I like to understand what's happening in there, and when I go into hypercritical mode, where I'm teching my tank every few hours, it's because I want to know what's going on. Once I've got a feel for what's going on, I then know how, know how to address it. Um, do I need to do a water change? Do I not? How much of a water change do I do? Can, is there something I can do to correct for what I've done? Um, is it just a, okay, we know something's going on, but just, you know, let's be patient and watch and wait. Um, uh, more often than not, that's the case because I know better than to do anything super radical. Um, you know, but I make changes that are drastic enough sometimes that I put a, put a little bit of a whooping on my, uh, uh, cultures in there and I have to go through a day or two where I'm sort of watching my tanks and you know I'm willing to do that I'm ready to do that and if as long as I am doing that I don't have to worry about killing any fish I'm actively cycling a tank in and I'm forcing it through a rapid cycle the tank we were you know just looking at the 125 and that's got an elephant nose fish in it and loaches you know animals that are notoriously sensitive to water conditions and I am successfully 
running them through a cycle in the tank with building ammonia levels and building nitrite levels and I'm doing that because I'm monitoring the tank every few hours and that's how I know we're coming down to the last few hours of needing to do anything. Um, I checked it yesterday and we were at about 2.5 you know, parts per million nitrites. My ammonia is done. Uh, getting no ammonia anymore. And when I checked it first thing this morning, I was still sitting just at or just below 0.25. So I had crested the hump. I did not actually acquire any more nitrites overnight. And in fact, it looked like they were beginning to come down. So I sat, I watched, I waited. I've done two more tests throughout the day. The nitrites are indeed coming down. And I'm now to the point where the color in the vial is just changing, but it's not enough to really get to that first color difference. So I'm right there. Um, the next few division of few cells in there I get within my bacterial cultures will be enough to start handling the bio load that's in that tank and I'm good to go and I can go into testing the tank once a day for a few days and as long as everything's still stable I'll go to checking it once every few days and then just keeping my eye on it and eventually I'll know I've gotten to the point where it's stable and done and I can stop being so critical about it. But it's just a simple matter of keeping your eye on your, your tank. Always, always, always think about what did I just do to the tank? How will that impact those bacterial cultures? Because they are the key to a healthy tank. You cannot have a healthy tank if you do not have healthy bacterial cultures. They are the linchpin that keeps your tank functioning. They are always the first thing you should think about whenever you're making changes to your tank. So, enough of the going on. I think I stressed enough that you really need to think about those bacterial cultures as members of your tank. Do it. It will change the way you maintain your tank, and it will save a lot of fish's lives in the long run. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I will see you on the next video, and hope you enjoyed this one.